Matt Fletcher, Matt Fletcher Home Inspections. One of the things that goes wrong with, uh, this is an old house in Detroit. It's uh, probably a 1920s Tudor over in the Rosedale Park area. But anyway, one of the things that goes wrong with these old garages, this is a three car garage here, is, um, you know, if they have a, a gable roof on them, so, you know, a peak like this, like this. So what happens is over time, this peak wants to come down, okay? Gravity wants to pull it down. And if it's not supported properly inside, see these, these are called wall ties, and they go from this end, the back wall, to the front wall. And they, they hold the two, these two, this back wall and this front wall, they hold them together. That's like a tension rod. It's holding it together like this, so it keeps this wall from going that way and this wall from going that way because there's a peak on top of it, right? And the weight pushes down this way. See, that's the roof up there and it pushes down. So yeah, this, this peak, this weight, this is the bearing wall here as they call it. See, the weight's pushing this way, okay? That's really what's supporting it. You could take the sidewall totally out if you wanted to. So anyway, one of the things I look for, and it, d it never shows up as well in the video or the pictures, but this back wall is bowing out because the weight has been pushing this way for a long time, since the 20s, and it pushes the top of the wall out back here. Pushes it out. And it could be pulled back in, it's not a big deal, uh, but I thought it was funny, is because this, this tree grew here. <laughs> Let's see. You can see the bow in it better, yeah, like this. See, you can see it's bowed out right here in the middle. But this tree happened to grow here and it's leaning against the ground, so it's actually holding this wall in. <laughs> so whenever I see a tree uh, planted too close to a structure, I mean, this is way too close to this garage. You know, the roots get up and destroys the garage floor and everything. You know, this tree's probably 60 or 70 years old. But uh, this tree just happens to be holding this wall in keep it from bowing out more but so you know basically this tree needs to be cut down and this wall needs to be supported um, pulled back in a little bit the way you pull that back wall back in is to cut those you set some jacks inside the garage set some jacks on the floor and then you run them up to the peak I've done this a couple of times so so you set the jacks here in your floor, and then you cut some boards, some two by fours or sixes, and nail them together, and you run it all the way up to the peak of the garage, okay? And I'd put like three across here probably if it was me. So I'd have three jacks with boards sitting on top of them, you know, long enough to reach up to the peak of the garage. And then I'd cut these wall ties out, the board that runs from front to back. After I got my jacks in, I'd cut these wall ties out. And then I would jack my jacks up and the jacks will push the peak back up. And as it pushes the peak up, it will suck this wall back wall back in. And it might not be perfect, but it'll be better than what it is. Because another symptom, I knew this garage was doing this the minute I pulled in the driveway, because this is what they call clotheslining. That ends high and it goes down in the middle and it's high on there, so it's clotheslining, it's going like this. So when the walls, the side walls, the front wall and the back wall on this garage starts to bow out, when it starts to spread, like I said, the center peak will start to sag. It sags in the middle. It can't sag on the ends because those side walls hold it up. So it sags in the middle. And this, this is what happens. This is classic. But, you know, I mean, other than that, it's a good garage. It's got a good roof on it and, you know, it's worth fixing and saving. A garage like this would probably cost 30 grand to build. So you could fix it for, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand bucks, you know, whatever you want to, how far you want to go with it. But, but yeah, that big tree needs to be cut down. So yeah, another, another symptom on these old, old garages is the, see the pavement out there is higher than in the garage. So when it rains, the water runs in here and a lot of times. The dirt outside here ends up higher than the garage floor. When this was built, the garage floor is probably, probably higher than the grass, but over the years, people bring in topsoil and sod and, and mulch, 
and it keeps getting built up higher and higher and higher and higher so the grade ends up higher than the garage floor so when it rains you know the garage is lower than out here so the rain goes in the garage and as it goes in the garage it rots out the bottom of the wall like this this was wood now it's mulch yeah I mean, ideally, you'd like to come in here and see this bottom of this wall. This is called the bottom plate or sole plate. You'd like to see a cement curb poured in here about six inches high, and then the wall sitting on top of that curb so you're nice and high out of the ground. That's the way you'd build it today. And when they, you know, fix these garages that have these issues, they'll do that. They'll cut off the bottom of the wall and pour a curb underneath it, and then, you know, let the, let the garage back down on the new curb. You know, that, that could cost a few thousand dollars, but like I said, this is... Probably a you know twenty-five to thirty thousand dollar garage, so so it's worth doing that. Anyway, that's it. Matt Fletcher, Matt Fletcher Home Inspections.